out of the grave Break into the wire And don't be afraid, oh Run into wide open spaces Grace is waiting for you Dance like the weight has been lifted Grace is waiting Where the Spirit of the Lord is There is freedom, there is freedom Where the Spirit of the Lord is There is freedom, there is freedom Come out of the dark, just as you are Into the fullness of His love Oh, the Spirit is you, let there be freedom Let there be freedom
Welcome to Word of Truth. We're so glad you're joining us this morning. Thank you for, we hope that you have an amazing time. And our ashes are just going to go around, give you a form to fill in so that we can get connected with you. And then after the service, our leadership of this church will love to have coffee with you. And our ushers will direct you to that, to that area in the lounge. All right, so we have a lot of people that are celebrating their birthdays this week. And it, it, it is Eunice's birthday today. Mama Eunice! Happy birthday, Mama Eunice. It's such a special day because you get to celebrate it on Mother's Day too, and you're also a mom. Amen. And then we have Van Marae, who's also having her birthday on Tuesday, the 16th of May. And it is a milestone birthday for her because she'll be turning 18 years. So yeah, she is turning 18. And then we have Lebel's birthday on the 17th. And then on the same day, we also have Medini's birthday on the 17th as well. And then we have Toinette who's having her birthday on the 18th, on Thursday. So woohoo! Can I... Is there anybody's birthdays or anniversaries that I've missed that's this week? All right. Can I ask those who are having their birthdays this week? Can you just stand so we can just bless you and that? Toinette, can you just come forward? I know you're on duty, but we just want to bless you. We don't want you to miss out on your blessing. Amen. All right, let's close eyes, family. Yes, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for these wonderful, special family, Father, that's in our church that's just celebrating a birthday this week, Father. Thank you that you've had another year, Father, another year in the land of the living, Father. Thank you for the season that you've taken them into. It's just such a wonderful season that it'll be such absolutely a, a great blessing into their life. That thank you that what they're believing and trusting you for will be come to pass in this season, Father. Thank you that um, they add so much value to this church, to this community, and I just thank you for what you're doing in Israel. Thank you that you have great plans and purposes for them, plans to prosper them and not to harm them. And thank you that there's such a shiny light in this community to advance your kingdom, Father. And we just give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, so we just have some announcements. And so our next Sunday speaker is our very own Tess Cameron. The so next Sunday speaker is Tess. And then we have, to all our volunteers, we're going to have a heart and soul evening on the 21st of May at 5 p.m. Yeah, at the church. So we're going to be connecting hearts, connecting with you. It's going to have amazing time. So I do encourage that all the volunteers, this is for you to receive. We know you give up tirelessly at least once a month, sometimes more than once a month, and just give to this community, give to this church. So this evening is just for you. So please please do attend. And if you're not volunteering and you want to volunteer and be part of a team, come along too and come and join us as well. We're going to have an amazing time. So that's next Sunday, the 21st of May at five o'clock. And then family, there will be a baptism service on the 4th of June. We're going to have a baptism in here in the service. So if you haven't been water baptized, please do put your name down. The register, you can come and see me after the service, or you can put your name down at the Welcome Center. There's a register there. Put your name down, put your contact details, and we'll be in touch with you. All right, so that's all the announcements for this Sunday. We're going to go into digital announcements, so please look at the screen for our weekly programs. Enjoy the service, family. Hey, family. I'm excited to give you our weekly announcements. If you came with your children, there is a fun and safe children's ministry facility. We invite you to drop off your children at True Kids. Our vibrant volunteers are more than happy to help you at the Welcome Center for more information and direction. Every Monday at 5 p.m., the dance ministry team is meeting here at the church. For more information, please ask our volunteer at the Welcome Center. On Tuesdays at 5.30 p.m., join us here at the church for our weekly prayer meetings. This is your time to worship and pray together as the Holy Spirit leads. Life group meetings will be running throughout the course of the week. We encourage you to be a part of a life group. 
this is an opportunity for you to connect with others, grow spiritually, and enjoy the life that is flowing in and through our church family. On Thursdays at 6.30 p.m., we have our worship band meetings. If you are musical, we encourage you to check out our worship rehearsals. On Fridays, our Trooper Youth has a fun, vibrant meeting for young people every Friday here at the church starting at 6.30 p.m. Do come join them for loads of fun, making new friends and going deeper with God. Finally, we also meet every Sunday morning for a pre-service prayer meeting from 8 a.m. until 8.45 in our conference center. Well, that's all the announcements I have for you. Please take note of these weekly programs and be a part of what God is doing in and through this church. Enjoy the rest of the service, family. Morning, everybody. There's just one more announcement. Um, you probably all know Africa Mplope. He is coming to visit us um, the 30th in Kenton and the 31st in Port Alfred. The 31st will be a morning and an evening session. Um, so this announcement is to remind you to start recruiting people. Um, and next week we'll tell you venues. We're still finding venues. Um, but really, just to, just to remind you, he's written a fourth book. And um, it really, ignorance is not bliss. <laughs> the word says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. So he will educate, and particularly if you don't know, he educates us with regard to some of the things that have become strongholds in our nation um, that hopefully will bring some liberty. So please, Africa and Plopa is a great speaker. He's going to, it is a book launch, but it's also a talk. Morning, morning, everybody. Morning. Okay. Good morning, church. Um, well, I recently learned that uh, John Wesley's mother um, was his biggest influence. Um, as you know, the huge impact he had upon um, England and uh, the rest of the world. And um, he, more than the most anointed uh, preachers and speakers of his time, he claims his mom. Um, helped him to get to where he got to. So, uh, mothers, we salute you. Um, you do not know if you are raising the next John Wesley, but we know that you are trying your hardest. So, keep going, and thank you. Amen, amen. Um, so, yes, moms, feel blessed. We love you, and um, I hope you guys take full advantage of the photo booth at the end. Um, celebrate with your special ones. Remember today... Um, so just feel loved upon this morning. And we also want to welcome our friends from across the road, Kyle and Kayla, who are here to minister to us this morning. And we are super excited to hear what God has laid on your hearts. So feel welcome here. And then, guys, we also have um, some testimony time from what happened this week. For those of you who... Um, weren't aware we had some missions um, team arrive and we went out and we did a lot of mission work um, and Tanil and Robin are going to come and share some testimonies from that so guys I love testimonies and particularly these ones are awesome so get excited and receive what the Lord has been doing in and around Port Alfred. So come on. Hey family, so this week we had the Missions Week and um, Faith Missions from, from Faith Church in East London as well as the Beyond Adventure students up in Alicedale Bushman's came and we just hosted and we were part of it as a team. Some of our church folk also went out and we were blown away for what God did. Um, yo, I was like, your God, he was amazing. I'm actually getting emotional now. The demonstrations of his work, the Bible is real. What he did is he, God is real. We saw it this week. Again, evidence was shown. And um, so I went out on a team on Tuesday and it was our first house and we went into Nomato and this guy um, 
he received us and we sat down and he said he's a believer and he's saved and we asked, we just chatted with him. And then the, the next thing we asked, can we pray for you? Because he's, he's trusting God for healing for cancer. And he had this squint eye and his pupil was like right in the corner here. And it was all matted up. And so someone just said, let's pray for his eye as well as for the cancer for healing. He was trusting God. And we just literally put our hands over and we all, as one of us touched him and touched his eye. And we just believed and trusted God for what he was doing. And we just said, simple, in Jesus' name, you are healed. And when that hand came over, God moved his eyeball, his pupil to the middle in the center. It was this lady, she, was, she has been so sick, and her, her body was sore, and she didn't want to see us. She's like, I'm busy. She was making a um, poco call, and she was like caring for someone who's sick. And then she then she called us in, and we literally sat in there for about 40 minutes to an hour. The five minutes ended up to 40 minutes. And we didn't touch her. We just prayed for healing. We asked her if she was saved, and she said, and we chatted around that, and then we went on to pray for her healing. And she said, we didn't touch her, and we just prayed for her, for God to heal. She forgot about it that we prayed for her, and um, she walked to go and call the man to see if we can go and pray for him in the room. She walked a few steps, and she went, and I will, my legs, I can move them. And as she went like this, and we're like, Baleka, Mama, Baleka. God, God was so awesome. And um, I didn't experience because I had to come back to the office and, and do the, uh, the afternoon session in the town. But my team, the team that I went with in Kanye from Faith Missions, they had a man who couldn't hear. And so they prayed for healing. And so Kanye put his hand over his mouth so he wouldn't be to see if he could hear. And he went and he went further and further and back. And this guy said he could hear him, what exactly he was saying. And God is so good. And then lastly, and then the one thing is that this is Lolly's testimony. She couldn't be here this morning, so I'll shit on her behalf because Jesus came to town. He came to Port Alfred. So they were praying, and um, just for four people in the house, the next month that whole street came in and flocked in and said, we want what you are doing there. We want, they're hungry. And Jesus came to town and they were blown away. They're like, we want you to pray for us. And so family, the harvest is ready. It's, it's ripe, it's ready. And I want to encourage you before I hand over to, to Robin, um, we're going to go up and follow up on the 3rd of June and just to go to those streets. And, and we're going to just follow up and see how they're doing. So I encourage you, we can't do it alone. And can I get a drum roll for this next thing? We've got statistics of what happened in three days. So can I get a drum roll for this? Lindy. Lindy, can you put up the next post? Can I ask you to put up that post with all the statistics? 255 people said yes to Jesus. And there were 44 healings in Port Alfred. This goes, this goes, and this is all God. This, the glory goes to him. This is him. He did it. And we were just merely the vessels that just said, yes, um, we will go. And it was such, for me, um, it just encouraged me. And it just, the, the, the way God just used us, something so simple. And we, we, we limit God. We put him in a box. And I want to say, God uses anybody. You don't have to be someone special, someone, a preacher or apostle of going to Bible college. He uses you. And and some of those students were not saved, but they came on, and by the end of the week, they were, some of them led, their students led other students to the Lord, and they were leading the way by Thursday, and the, the leaders of the group stepped aside as they were so excited to just see what God was, and amazed what God had done, the evidence that was so real. So I encourage you, the 3rd of June, we're going to go out, and we're going to go as a group, as a church, and we're going to go and follow up in those streets of what God did. Amen. Um, is this on? Yes. Um, well, we're made for this. I mean, really, we're being uh, 
this is what we should be doing. We should be going out making disciples of all men. You know, this is the thing, and so exciting. I mean, to get out and see the people and minister to the people and just to see the response. Um, it's just it, the Holy Spirit's before you, and He just opens the door and does amazing things. We went down to one place there, and we were ministering to one man in the corner, and. Uh, Anyway, he received Jesus, and then all of a sudden, his wife and his daughter came, and then more children came, and we were leading people to the Lord, and they were coming to us into one house. It was amazing. Then we went to another place. Um, ladies, we found a lady's birthday. She had given her life to the Lord on her birthday. She was so over the moon. And we ministered to her, and I looked at her legs, and I said, you know, if you've got diabetes, she said, yes, uh, very, the legs were very... So we prayed for them, but we're going back to see whether the healing, because we believe she's been healed. But she was so excited, she's given her life to the Lord on her birthday. We went to another man, Johnny. He was amazing. He was, came to meet us walking with a stick, and he said he had arthritis, and we prayed for that. And then he talked about cancer, so he prayed about that. Um, and then um, he got up and he said, oh, I've got such a sore hip here. I just don't know what to do. I said, well, let's sit down, put your legs out. And I bent down and I put your two legs, I held them like this. And we tried, we just prayed and prayed and prayed. And it didn't grow totally together, but there was some growth. So we're going back to check on that to see yeah. that the healing, yeah. because we believe he was healed. He was still hemping a little bit when he tried, but we believe he's healed, and the manifestation of that healing will take place. Sometimes healing isn't now, now. Sometimes it takes a bit, a bit of faith on his side, and God working with him, through him, on other issues as he receives his healing. So, wow, it was amazing. It was amazing. Awesome, ladies. Thank you so much. Thanks. I think it's just incredible, and it's incredible. And then let's not limit it to this week. If you heard that um, testimony and you feel inspired and you know someone in your neighborhood or someone at your workplace who's feeling sick, there's nothing stopping you from praying for them and expecting a miracle and a healing in that space. So let this momentum carry on. Let it not be blocked up. This is like Robin said, we're made to do this. This is our everyday job, actually. Come on. Um, so encouraging. And, um, and I, I think we're in for more. Uh, we're in for a real treat today. I mean, I've already been prophesied over by Pastor Kyle. And um, so I think the um, uh, Lord is moving. So, But just before we get right back into worshiping God and lifting it up and, and praising Him, um, I just, I mean, we're going to give uh, and time to just bring your offerings and tithes. Um, but I just re really feel like I need to say uh, thank you to the Lord for carrying me through last Sunday when I had to preach. And um, it really... Yeah. <laughs> I mean... We, like for me, it was a personal, it was a really a great thing, but I mean, I, I just have to say that I relied on Jesus so much last week, and um, so all glory to, to him and for what he's doing. Articulate with 
the thousand tongues to lift one cry Then from north to south and east to west With you Christ be magnified With the whole earth echoing His eminence from sea and sky, from rivers to the mountain tops, with you Christ be magnified.
I'm going to share a couple of, of stories before, before getting into the Word. And who here knows Thomas Edison? Yeah, I was also like, I heard of him. The name rings a bell. M- must be from Port Alfred, but he's not. Um, Thomas Edison is the, the person who invented the light bulb. And, um, oh, sorry, I should start off with, with my title. History is, made, history is made by people whose names we will never know or never remember. So this is why I bring up Thomas Edison. I said, who here knows Thomas Edison? And I got lots of head nods, some people saying, yeah, heard, heard the name. Thomas Edison's, while he was at school and he was still quite young, his teacher gave him a letter and said, go give this to your mother. Don't open it, go give it to your mother. And he went straight back home after school and gave the letter to his mother. And his mother read out the letter to him. And the letter went like this. Your son is a genius. We won't be able, we don't have the facilities to actually teach him in the way that he's meant to be taught. So we ask that you teach him. Anyway, I'm cutting it a bit short. Anyway, through this whole thing, years later when when his mother dies, he goes looking through the the stuff on her desk and he opens up this letter. And in this letter, it says, your child is adult, mentally ill, and we can't teach him. We don't want to take him in. And Thomas Edison just burst out crying while reading this. And he was saying in this whole thing that he attributes so much to his mother. Because his mother had the opportunity to to go with... Many people would say, this is the reality. But But his mother saw a different reality. And his mother refused to speak a certain thing over her child. And I want to encourage everyone here today, we have this opportunity to speak over our children, over over people. I'm going to... Thomas Edison's mother's name was Nancy Edison. And if I said, who here knows Nancy Edison? No one would raise their hand. However, because of the decision she made, she changed history indirectly. History is made by people whose names we'll never remember. But they will reap the harvest of that. Another one I want to, want to go to is Smith Wigglesworth. Who knows Smith Wigglesworth? Everyone raises their hand, yeah, drop-kicking babies off stage and they're, they're getting healed. So, Smith Wigglesworth used to be a plumber and he was a very harsh man when he was an unbeliever. And his wife, who knows his wife's name? Peggy. So, his wife's nickname was Molly. Close. <laughs> But her, her real name was Mary Jane. And for me, again, we all know Smith Wigglesworth. His wife was in the Salvation Army. And she was preaching and going for it. And while she went out to preach and go to these church services, he used to get angry. And he would say, no, I want you to stay at home with me. And she would say, you know what? You, my husband, I respect you, but I I follow the master. I follow my Lord. And anyway, so one day Smith Wigglesworth gets frustrated and he locks locks her out of her house. And she gets back 
house is locked, and she falls asleep on the, leaning up against the door on the doormat there. And the next morning, Smith Wigglesworth wakes up and goes to fetch his paper, unlocks the door, opens, and there she is sleeping. She gets up, gives him the paper, and goes and makes him breakfast. Now, I think, I think if I did that to my wife, I'd get a lot more than breakfast. Um, but in the Smith Wigglesworth writes, and it says, Smith Wigglesworth says that my life was changed through a loving wife. And he gave his life to the Lord because of how his wife loved him. A name we do not know, but yet has changed history. Reinhard Bonnke, we all know Reinhard Bonnke. Do you know the person who got Reinhard Bonnke's grandfather saved? Because Reinhard Bonnke attributes in his book, and I've forgotten the guy's name, Jesus loves me. But he attributes this guy saying, if this guy didn't get my grandfather saved, I don't know if I would have done what I've done. You know, so often everyone wants to be the name out there that's seen and all in front and but man, what if God's calling you to, to do one thing? To get one person saved, to change one person's life. What if God just calls you to show love? Irrespective of the circumstances or situations, the situations crying out for you to react, and you just show love. Anyway, I'm going to mention a name now that many people will know, but some people, I believe, won't know, unless it's been shared last Sunday or something. But, but Barnabas, and I say, okay, who here knows Barnabas? There will be a couple of head nods, not many. And then if I said, okay, well, what did Barnabas do? If you, if you want to say that, then, then all of a sudden the people don't know Barnabas anymore. Barnabas' name means the son of encouragement. So powerful. And you read about Barnabas in, in Acts and, and everything he did. Where are the Barnabases in the church? Where are the sons of encouragement in the church? The people to rise up and say, there's hope, don't give up, keep going. Keep going. Jesus loves you, go for it. Even those testimonies we saw in the beginning... That's amazing. We, we, there's more. And there are more people who, who need to be stepping out into that. Whether, whether we like it or not, we can nod our head and say, yeah, awesome. But unless you do something, you're going to sit here. You know, the graveyard is full of unfulfilled p potential. Meaning, meaning that many people have died without fulfilling their potential or their destiny. And I'm not saying this to scare anyone. I'm saying, come on, there's more. There's more. You can be Thomas Edison's mother, Nancy. You can be Polly, Smith Wigglesworth's wife. You can be someone that is busy raising up the next generation that's going to change, put Alfred the world. And I really felt this, is especially for mothers, because it actually sums up motherhood almost to the T. Your name will never be known. But in that, you're raising up another generation so that they can be world changers. And as a mother, I'm not saying your name will never be known like that, but I'm saying you're not doing it to make your name known. You're not doing it to Oh, look at me. But you're raising up your child 
so that they can go and change the world. That they can go change the world. Sir, I don't know what your, your name is. Um, yeah. Rina. Rina, God is restoring what the enemy has come to destroy and he's coming in and he's... I know things are challenging and they're difficult, but God's saying he's, he's the comforter, he's the counselor, and he's the God who will restore. And when he restores, it's better than it was before. Even though sorrow may last for the night, joy comes in the morning. Holy Spirit, I just thank you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you are the God who restores. Better than it was before. Father, we love you. We love your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anyway, I have another example I'm going to share. Who knows the, the woman at the well? Many people say, oh, we know the story. Who knows the woman's name? It doesn't mention the woman's name. So if someone said so, I'd be like, sorry, you got it wrong. But, you know, we don't quite realize what happens in this story. It's John 4. And in the story of the woman at the well, his disciples go off to go get food, and Jesus stays there, and this woman comes. And he has this conversation with this woman. And this is where we talk about the five husbands and the man, you're not, you, the man you're staying with now is not your husband. And she's like, wow, I perceive that you're a prophet. And then carries on chatting to him. Anyway, what I want to get to here is she runs back into town and tells everyone what is happening. And then a multitude arrives. And then Jesus starts to minister. So the reality of it is, where, where are you in this? The woman at the well, who, her name is not known. But yet she's stirred up a revival in her whole community by just going and sharing and saying, look what the Lord has done. He told me all this stuff. I've got excited. I'm not going to keep it to myself. I'm going to go and I'm going to share. Because so often we get in a place and we're just like, oh, what happened on Sunday? It was good. What was shared? I can't remember, but it was good. I'm feeling wonderful. How are we going to go stir up? Because we have the opportunity. If I had a tennis ball here and I threw it to someone and they catch it. If you didn't want to catch it, it would hit you in the face. And bounce on the floor. But you have to have a decision to receive it, meaning catch it. Same as a, a whatever, American football. They have someone called a receiver. On Sunday, irrespective of who's up here sharing, we need to have people that are receivers over here that don't just go, oh, that was nice. What did he share? He shared something about mothers because it was Mother's Day. No, we, we want people's lives to be touched and transformed. We want to have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Sorry, I know I've jumped around a bit, but I really feel like irrespective of who's here, irrespective of if they your neighbor, I can even have my wife. She knows everything I do at home. She knows my faults. But when I'm up here preaching, she listens and she takes it as if God's speaking. And she receives it by faith. Because God is speaking and He uses people to speak through. And sometimes we, we know this person and we're familiar with them that we don't actually receive. So the opportunity is yours. You know, Jesus is still going to love you the same whether you receive or if you don't receive. But you're missing out. You're missing out. So receive what God has. And I've gone on a little rabbit trail. But in this receiving, go chat to someone when you're having tea and coffee 
and say, you know what? The, the message this morning was about this, this, and that. Because as soon as you start doing that, it starts to settle in your heart. And all of a sudden, when you get to, to Monday, you're not like, oh, it felt good, but I don't know what to do now because I've got all these challenges. No, you get to Monday and you said, oh, but the word says. Because on Sunday, someone preached and said this. And the word says it because I went to go look it up for myself. I have no clue where I was going there. Anyway, woman at the well. Okay, so we got this whole thing that history is made by people whose names we will never know. Awesome. How does that benefit me? How does it change my life? Because so often we can preach messages on a Sunday that are like, oh, that was clever, that was, that was nice. He mentioned Tom, Thomas Edison's mother and Smith Wigglesworth's wife and said they changed history, but how? What did they do? How does it apply to me? How does it work? Because the reality of it is if you don't know how, you can't go and do it. I'm going to share what I believe is the most, I want to say the most key. I'm going to go through one more example before jumping into that. Second Timothy 1 verse 5. Here's another biblical example for mothers out there. And anyone, actually. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother, Eunice, your grandmother, Lewis, and in your, your mother, Eunice. And I'm persuaded now lives in you also. This is Timothy writing. I'm not Timothy. Paul writing to Timothy, saying, man, I saw this faith in your grandmother, and in your mother, and now they've passed it on to you. And now look where, where you are. It's in you. But they've trained you up. They've said, okay, here we go. There's a scripture that has been in my heart for such a long time. I'm going to go, I'm going to go read it now. And this goes into the next part. Um, of what I want to share, how to make it practical. Because if we, we don't make it practical, we can leave here and, and nothing changes. We're not here just to hear a message. We're here to hear what Jesus wants and how we're going to move forward. Anyway, Mark 4, parable of the sower. Mark 4 verse Verse 24. Anna, verse 23. If anyone has ears, let him hear. Then he said to him, Take heed to what you hear, for the same measure will be used to measure you. And he who hears more, more will be given. Interesting. You know, we often take that scripture out of context and we say, Whoever does more, more will be given. And that's written in, in Luke. Also, So what it's saying here, it's in the whole parable of the sower. The sower sows the seed, the word of God. Then it says, okay, take heed to what you're hearing, what you're listening to. Because the same measure you're listening to is going to come back to you. Galatians 6 verse 7 says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked whatsoever a man sows that he shall reap. Whatsoever a man sows that he shall reap. If I plant pineapples, I'm not going to get oranges back. If I do all sorts of nonsense during the week and I come to Sunday, what am I saying? Yeah, it might be challenging. Thank you, Jesus. Mark three fourteen. 
And this verse, I, I feel like I can just read it over and over again. He appointed 12 that they might be with him, that he might send them out to preach and to have power over sickness, cast out devils, and then he goes and he names the 12. But there's something we miss here that is very, very subtle. He appointed 12 that they might be with him. Did you hear that the first time? Because quite often when we hear this verse, we lack the power to heal the sick, the power to do all these things. Yes, we've been given that. And I'm taking nothing away from that. But we were first called to be with him. We were first called to, to plant the right seeds by spending time in a relationship with him. In John 6, the wedding at Canaan, you know, Mary comes to Jesus and says, there's a problem. We've run out of wine. And because it's Mother's Day, I'm going to share what Jesus said back. Woman, it's not yet my time. Woman, it's not yet my time. Then Mary goes to the servants and says, whatever he says, do it. This morning I'm saying to you, whatever Jesus says, do it. It's simple. It's through a relationship in him. Yeah, but I come to church once a week. Yeah, but what do you do during the week? Because relationship, if I had a relationship with my wife and I only spoke to her on Sunday, there would be a lot of talking on Sunday. And I don't know if I, it might have to be in fast forward. Thank you, Jesus. So how do I get into a relationship with Jesus? Because if we want to raise up the next generation to change the world, many people want to be world changers themselves. Abide in me and you will produce much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So what is your what is your name? Abram. Pardon? Abram. Ah, oh, what an awesome name. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, what you're doing right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. One word from God changes lives. And he sees the hunger in your heart. Those who hunger and thirst will be filled. Not they might be. And there are lots of people, I just see lots of people around you. Um, so I'm not sure what you do, but you're connected to a whole bunch of people. And God's giving you wisdom and clarity on how to deal with all these people. And he's saying, you hear my voice. Don't doubt it. You hear my voice and you know. When that thing comes in your heart, I feel I need to do this. Go for it, because that is God and he's speaking to you. So I just want to confirm that, that you hear God's voice. God's proud of you and he's saying, keep going. Keep going. You've been sowing the seeds for a long time. Continue to sow. And restoration is coming to the family. Thank you, Lord. It was quite funny. Sorry, I'm going to share a story, what happened to me on the first youth camp I went on, that just remind, reminded me of it now. I used to always ask the youth, um, what did I say? And then they would 
say it back to me, and I'm like, okay, they're listening. Because I wanted to do it to you guys. What did I just say? And um, then the one night, it was the last evening, and I hardly had any sleep. I was tired. And I moved away from my Bible, and I got there, and I was like, oh, my word, I've gone completely blank. I have no clue what I've just shared, what I've said. I don't know anything. So I went, what did I say? And then they shouted back. I was like, okay, I can work with that. And then I carried, <laughs> then I carried on. Um, Anyway, thank you, Lord. Even though, I mean, it's going to be different. I said it was going to be different. And they're little bits and pieces. But take what the Lord's saying to you. Take what he's saying to you. Thank you, Jesus. We have ears to hear. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So if we, if we say that we're going to change the world, it starts off in the secret place. It starts off with spending time with him. And many people will say, okay, the secret place, or we get there, and we're like, okay, cool, spend my five minutes devotional. Cheers, Lord, see you. See you next morning for the five minutes devotional. And for some reason, I, I do it too. So I'm sharing what happened to me. I do a bit of woodwork um, when I get a chance and when I get a gap. I love doing woodwork. But um, for those of you who do woodwork, um, if you've got the right machines, it makes it easy. If you don't, or the wood skew, you can get a little bit frustrated. Anyway, I, I go and make these things and then I sell them just for yeah I just enjoy doing it and then in the process of making these things they're normally a bit skew <laughs> then I have to like uh, whip out the grinder and sh -sh -sh -sh, make things and then it, it ends up taking a really long time to end up making these things and making them look perfect and anyway um, the one day I was in my workshop and the, someone came to me and well not, I got a message beforehand so I started praying for, for these people. And while I was praying I just kind of carried on with my, my workbench and I want to almost laugh and I wonder why I do it by myself. Because I, I cut the angles for the angled legs and everything fitted into the T. That I didn't have to pull out the grinder to fix all this stuff that everything just fitted together perfectly. And I realized, oh, I'd been spending time with the Lord. I'd been in a relationship with Him. Anyway, another example was I was busy doing my workshop. I thought, oh, let me organize my whole workshop. Anyway, getting so frustrated because I'm like, this needs to go here. No, it's not going to work. That needs... Uh, anyway, I've spent like hours and Kayla Shame has to hear about a thousand different ideas. And eventually I prayed and I was like, oh my word, this is so simple. So for example, I wanted a saw to sit flush with the counter. So I needed to drop the saw lower. Now I'm like measuring and I'm like, oh, I need to cut a plank this thickness to get it in there to fit. Blah, -de blah, I'm not going to share all the boring woodwork stuff with you even though I already have. Um, but I was struggling to get this right because the floor isn't level, and I'm making the counters level, but the floor's not level. Anyway, so I just felt, go get this table from outside. So I went and got the table, and I put the table there and put the saw on top of the table, and it was 100% flush. And I was like, I've spent hours and days planning and how I'm going to cut what to put in the right place that it's going to work and this whole plan. And I went and got a table that works perfectly, better than I could have ever done. And I was like, oh my word, why didn't I from the start bring the Lord in? Why did I, why did I wait 
hours and days and have these discussions and conferences with Kayla saying, what do you think? She's like, I know nothing about woodwork. But um, <laughs> instead, I could have just asked the Lord and it would have been like, oh, just go fetch the table. And just for clarity, it wasn't the Lord saying, go fetch the table. I was standing in my workshop and I'm like, I feel I need to just go fetch this table. So I went and got the table. Because many people are waiting for an audible voice, for God to come speaking out of a cloud. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. What does it mean to be led? Oh, I just feel this here. Even when I'm ministering and I'm sharing over people, I go, oh, I just feel a drawing here. Okay, so what's your name? What's happening in your life? Then I wait and then I'm like, okay, cool. Sometimes I'll leave you and come back when I, when I feel something because my job is to share what I believe the Lord's saying. And if I'm not hearing from him, then I, I shouldn't be speaking. So even if I see you and I say, what's your name? And I go carry on preaching. I need to wait to hear what the Lord's saying because it's a word from God that changes a life. Same way as Mary said, whatever he says, go and do it. Whatever Jesus says, go do it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. So, practically, how do I have a relationship with God? Like I shared a couple of minutes ago before getting very distracted. Jesus loves my distraction. But you know what? I was sharing about that five-minute devotional, then we go, and then I shared the story of the woodwork. You know, Jesus wants to be in every part of our day. And he wants to be in our businesses, our families, our everyday life. And it's not good enough to just have a five-minute devotional. It's easier. It is easier. But when, we, when we're going through the shops saying, Lord, thank you for today. Because many people don't pray because they don't know how to pray. Many people don't pray because just start. What do I say? Well, is, what's the weather like outside? Start somewhere. Start anywhere. Lord, I thank you for my family. And all of a sudden, you find yourself going through your day and you're just saying, Lord, I thank you. I oh, thank you. Oh, there's this, I feel this drawing to this person because now I'm sensitive. He who has ears, let him hear. There are many people in church who don't have ears. They've got decorations on the side of their heads. I know many women will say that for their husbands. But, um, <laughs> ornaments. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to encourage everyone here this morning Pursue Jesus, for he is pursuing you. I, I read a study this morning, not this morning, during the week, and I've forgotten to write down the, the statistics. But in the study, was they did a study with a whole bunch of people with um, reading their Bible and seeing how it changes their life. And the people who read it once a week, nothing really changed. And the people who read it twice a week, nothing really changed. And the people who read it three times a week, stuff started changing. But from four times a week, there was a drastic change in people's lives. Um, the rate of suicide with these people dropped 60%. Pornography dropped 60%. Anger dropped 40%. Those are just some of the statistics I can remember. This is from just reading the word. 
What is it? It's from spending time with Jesus in relationship with Him. Because we know, we've heard it enough that Jesus changes lives. So spend time with Him so He can change your life. The same way as when you spend time with someone, if I started, so I started saying shucks. I can promise you that Kayla says shucks now. So if she kicks her toe, she'll be like, ah, shucks. Because I said, and she's in relationship with me. So as we become, um, John 17, I'm going to turn there now, John 17 verse 20. We become like who we spend time with. So stop trying to put all these rules in place and things to do to become more like Jesus and rather start spending time with Jesus that you can become like him. Oopsie. Thank you, Jesus. John 17... Okay, um, in the beginning part of John 17, it says a similar thing. Um, John 17, 9 and 10. But I'm going to verse 20. I do not pray for these alone, but also those who will believe in me through their word, that they may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. First of all, I just want, want to clarify Church unity is not by us trying to build bridges with all these churches and have a, have a good time and chat and have these arguments. No. Church unity is here. Because when he's saying, Father, that they may be one as we are one, meaning that oneness comes this way, not this way. So when the church starts to become one like this, it will automatically become one sideways. The same way we become one with Him. That's why as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Meaning I'm led by His voice. I'm led by His Spirit because I spend time with Him. I can trust His voice. And I know. And you know what? Even if I step out, And I miss it. Jesus loves me. Because I miss it. I can call up someone and say, I believe this, and it can be completely wrong. I've called up someone in our church before that wasn't even there. Never met this person before. But the next person I called up also never came to church before, but their life was changed. It's okay to miss it. We, we, we fear of missing it, so we never step out. I've run through pick and pay. We felt like we must go pray for someone in pick and pay. I went through all the aisles. Got to the last aisle, there was a guy packing milk. So I was like, has to be this guy, huh? Anyway, it wasn't him. And he got creeped out and ran. And, and every aisle after that, I seemed to bump into the same guy. <laughs> but a little bit later, Kayla met with a woman and just got to minister to this woman. And she just broke down and said, how did you know that I needed to hear this? But yet, if we never stepped out, if I was too afraid to step out, I would have missed it completely. Because by me stepping out, I'm busy learning, saying, okay, this is God's voice, this isn't. So next time, I'm going to go with this feeling rather than this. So that's why I say, hear him, hear the voice, and then you have to do something with it. Because many people believe they're hearing God, but they're not doing anything with it. So they're, they're unsure if they can actually trust what the Lord is saying. 
But the more time you spend with him, the more you can identify, the more you can step out because you're led by his spirit. I think it's, it's either Romans 8, 11 or Romans 8, it's Romans 8, 14. As many as are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. As many as are led. It's so simple. But do make it so complicated. It's relationship. It's relationship. And I feel like I just need to keep saying it's relationship, it's relationship. Because the reality of it is we don't we don't get it. We hear it. And we hear it most Sundays that we need to spend time with Jesus. Why do we need to spend time with him? I'm telling you now, it's a secret weapon in business to have a relationship with Jesus because he knows what's going to happen before it happens. And we know these things. So spend time with him. There have been decisions we've made that don't make sense. And people will be like, why on earth are you making this decision? It's what we feel. A couple of months down the line, how did you guys know that you needed to make that decision? Just went with what I believe the Lord was saying. Because I can't stand up here on a Sunday and say, you need to go with what the Lord's saying if I'm not doing it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close in prayer, but I just want to clarify. It's, it's simple. It's spending time with Him. Whether it is reading your Bible or praying, it's not making it complicated. You can literally talk to the Lord throughout your day. And read your Bible. If you don't, if you don't believe, then I challenge you. Read your Bible every day for a month. And if you don't see a change in your life, you can come chat to me. Come chat to me. I challenge you to do it. If you read your Bible, not just reading, if you read your Bible, chapter a day, for a month, and it doesn't work, come chat to me. Thank you, Father. Father, I thank you that you are so faithful. We give you all the honor and all the glory. Father, I thank you that we have ears to hear what your spirit is saying. Father, I pray that you ignite a fire in our hearts. The same as with Jeremiah where he's saying, there's this fire in my bones. I can't share, but I have to share. Father, I pray for that burning inside each and every one of us. That as we have a relationship with you, we just we got so much inside that we can't just keep it in. We have to go. We have to share. Father, I pray that we won't be hearers only, but we'll be doers of your word. We'll, we'll sit in your presence. We will first be with you, and then we'll go out. Father, we give you all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to, if anyone feels they want a word from the Lord or wants prayer or encouragement, come to the front. We'll pray with you. The elders are also going to be here to pray with you. Um, if you don't, God bless you. Have an awesome Sunday. And um, there's tea and coffee. Am I meant to say anything else? Uh, cake for the mothers. No, Jacob, that might be cake for everyone. Cake for everyone.